don't want this video to be blocked in Japan, which that's from the Omni Monogatari OST. Don't ask me to say the name. So, Fluence AI60. Now, I did the AI40s and I really liked them. They were small, they were pretty, they performed, they worked on the desk, they were cheap, great. So Fluence messages me again and says, hey, we want to send you the AI60. And I'm like, cool, I can't wait to recommend the AI60. I do not recommend the AI60. Let's go over the points. Six and a half inch speaker, correct? $300 a pair, if you don't know, if you want to click the link in the description to see, maybe they've lowered it since then. $300 a pair, six inch, sealed. So, six inch sealed. Why? Low end capabilities are completely fucked. That's number one. Number two, this is what's powering them. Now any other monitor on earth, you plug the 110 directly into it, but instead we're running a 24 volt 3 amp. Now, a power brick for a six and a half instead of monitors is like, eh? But at the same time, I constantly recommend things like the SA98 or the Mica or a gain like 50 watt per channel amp and that runs on a power brick too. So I mean there's a capability of it running on, you know, but uh, amplification doesn't seem like it could even push the low end, which is maybe why it's failing a little bit. Number 3. When I first did the review of these speakers, like my first initial listen, and sound demo, I did the sound demo a couple of weeks ago when I first got it set up. I used the fiber optic input. This has Bluetooth pairing, a USB PC input, and a fiber optic input. I'm thinking fiber optic input, I'm thinking remote control, and a fiber optic input, I'm thinking soundbar killer. I don't know, no. So I use a fiber optic input and I do the sound demo. Now, if you go to the sound demo, I was thinking about re recording it, but I'm not going to because. I've never heard lately what a bad DAC sounds like. And I'm like, is it the amp? Is it the lack of power in the amp? Is it the amp, the DAC? I'm pretty sure it's the DAC because now I've got a JDS Labs EL DAC hooked up. Analog, boom, that, that amp, that DAC is worth as much as these speakers are. And it's coming off my FLAC library. And I will tell you it sounds cleaner than my initial listening because when I used fiber optic into this, I actually heard the digital compression. I'm like, what the fuck is going wrong? So the DAC in it is poo-poo. The amps are lackluster. There's no ports. You do get bass and treble adjustments, but putting the bass up on a sealed box that isn't like a perfect tuned insano speaker is like gonna just... Oh, Canada, our fair and native land. I don't know the actual things, I'm sorry. This does have a subwoofer out though. And I'm going to hook up a subwoofer in the middle of this review and give it another four or five minutes. I'll hook a sub up to it because I have a couple lying around. And then we'll see if that fixes it. And I'll, uh, spoilers, it won't, but it'll be funny. So yeah, uh, it's got Aptax. It's got a subwoofer out. I do like the, I just finished, I do reviews in a row. Like I know what these speakers sound like for weeks. And I just finished the rock fills. Did the Rockfills come up before this? If you're a patron, you're probably watching this review and the Rockfill review in the same day because I released a bunch of them in a, in a row. The Rockfills have four amplifiers because they individually power the tweeters on both sides and the woofers on both sides using a special cable. This is just using a straight up cable. And by the way, this is not the cable it comes with. This is one of those mica cables. Actually, it's the longer version. And I love these cables. I'll sell you something on this video. If it's not these beautiful speaker cables that Micah makes, then eh, well, it won't be the speakers. I like these. I like this system, and I hate this system. Number one, if it was a proprietary four-way screw-in connector like on the Rockvilles or on the Vanatus or on the Swans, that means the amplifiers in the master speaker can individually tune the tweeters and the woofers without having to use a passive crossover like every other speaker uses. But since we're running just two conductors over here, that means there's a standard speaker crossover in here, which means there's a standard speaker crossover in here, which means it's just a stereo amplifier in here, not a four-way amplifier. So it's 
When you have a self-powered monitor, you could do all sorts of magical things. You can DSP correct it. You don't even have to use physical crossovers. You can send whatever amplification. You could have it so when you change the volume, it will actually uh, restrict a driver one more than the other because you could do so many magical things with DSPs. But this mean, but that wire, the fact that it's just and it's just a standard fucking wire they give you means that you're just getting a speaker and another speaker and there just happens to be an amplifier attached to it. So the amplifier is not that great. And the speaker is sealed. And in a six and a half, it's possible to get low end out of it. But these don't. If I, I'm gonna kick some more tracks through it just so you get like the feel for it. We gotta go about sound too, because I'm I'm gonna be a little bit harsh in these speakers, and I apologize to Fluence. You guys make great stuff. S SX sixes are like still a reviewed pair. I still love the the uh, signature series. The, the AI forties are great, but these AI sixties fall so short of the mark. It's like they do that thing. I haven't had this in a while, where I'm I usually review standing up, but then I actually sit down on the couch and I stand up and I sit down. And if I can hear the sound change on like this weird angle because the timing between the two has to be right or else the sound is fucking weird. The treble uh, is faster. It goes from here to there faster than the bass gets from here to there. And if they don't time align at a good distance, then you end up having a good listening spot like here, like up. And that's what we have here. Because if I play that song, it's the exact same song, and this is from country, the American tradition, Bill Monroe and his Bluegrass Boys. Blue Moon of Kentucky, and don't judge me on that. I downloaded it because country actually has some really good recording quality. This feels like it's a 1940s rip, though. You, if you're ever looking through windows of my apartment, you'd see a man randomly doing this a bunch. Because I could hear the sound is not as quite as more treble here than it is here, but do I like the treble here, and is that wrong? And then if I move left and right, it's not terrible, but... That's weird. That's just weird. That's a bad phasing issue they've got going on with the with the this is crossover design. Again, we're back to crossover design. If it was a DSP, they'd literally be able to go and code in a delay of something, the tweeter, just delay it this much, and then it would line time a line down. So they have weird treble angles. Now the treble itself. Now luckily we can adjust it because it's a little bit harsh. Now this is a big old soft dome, and ain't nobody does big old soft domes like Fluence because uh, SX6 is just perfect. So the fact that this one gets a little bit mmm. I also have to point out, build quality is not terrible. It's not. It's, 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 it's actually a more solid box than the Rockville. That's like a brick. I'm not showing any hardware. I like the cone material, way it looks. What bothers me is that A, they're, they don't have a cover, fine. I'm okay with not having a cover. But the Rockville's had the presence of mind to put a metal cover over the tweeter, where this doesn't, and guess what? You don't have a cover and you don't have anything protecting the tweeter. So that means you've got a permanently exposed soft dome that is just so pushable. I wanna push it. I'm not even a six year old little boy. I'm just like, mm, that looks like a button. So that's a little bit sketchy. It's like, I mean, I have I review tons of speakers that have like pushable tweeters, but they have a, like something you could put over the front of it. Something to put over the front of it. This is just big old soft dome. You, you're fucked. And just, I just want to fucking push it. Knob on the front. Here, we should probably talk with the knob. Knob will power it off. Knob will, I'm sorry. Knob will change the input. Purple, blue, all the different inputs in the back. Amber is analog, which is what I'm using because I can't stand the sound of the DAC. That's, this is like a first on zero views. Usually things that have digital inputs, I just accept them. It's like, all right, here's how the DAC sounds in it. That sounds pretty good. But I literally heard how crunchy it sounded. It's a marvelous example of bad as far as DACs go. So, I mean, let's just completely wipe it out. I mean, I'm, maybe the Bluetooth will sound better. I don't even, I haven't Bluetooth to it in weeks, but I'm not going to now for this. At this point in the review, I think you're pretty much not thinking about them. And I wish you could, but they've got so many little things wrong. Little things wrong, like where the angle is, you gotta listen to that. And then 
The remote, I mean, let's look at the remote for a second. Treble and bass. And the indicator is nice in that when you change and you go and you hit the middle point, it will flash twice. And then when you go to like, if I raise the bass up, three, four, five, now it flashes black, uh, red. It's like, oh, you're at the maximum amount of bass. So we're now at the maximum amount of bass possible. It's, the thing is it's throwing the speaker. It's moving a lot. But I'm standing here. And I can guarantee you, on my apartment and everything in its life, there's those little Micah RB42X, or not even X's, RB42's, these little four inch, these little baby four inches with the port do way more bass. The Rockvilles did more bass, and they're half the cost. Everything does more bass than this, even with the bass maxed out. And then you could take the treble and you could knock it down like one notch, because I feel like it needs to come down like one notch. This, by the way, is Mr. Robot. Uh, I chose this from the official soundtrack. Oh. It's doing all that movement, but there's no, it's not upsetting the air. There's nothing on my tables rattling. There's just, they sound lame. Oh God, I hate giving them such a bad review. Uh, let's add a sub. I just happen to have one flying around. Do, 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 do. So uh, Fluence can't say, oh, I hooked up a crappy sub to these. Cause it does have a sub out, which when you plug it in, here's the thing. First thing you do to test when you have a sub out. Play some music, bassy music, plug in an RCA. It doesn't have to be attached to anything. Just plug an RCA in. The Vanitu T1 Encores that are in my other apartment. I plug in a subwoofer to those or a wire to those and they dim and come back up louder. And then all the bass that was in the speaker is gone. Because the DSP inside it says, oh, I've sensed I sense that RCA has been plugged in. I'm going to remove bass from myself and give it to the subwoofer at this certain frequency range. That's proper. Not many things do proper. And well, neither does this. Plug you in, you're gonna wake up. Green light. Click, click. So there is a $4,000 Genelec subwoofer now attached to these $300 fluences. Where's my, where's my make play button go? So now there's bass, but here's the problem. I should probably lower the bass down on the unit because it should lower the bass down on the subwoofer. You gotta hit it every time, you can't just hold it. And it's red at the bottom. Not a fucking thing changed. Here's, what's up. here's the problem now that I've hooked up a subwoofer. Because this Genelec sub doesn't have any controls on it for a frequency response or anything else. It's all done through the control box, which is in a puddle on the floor, even though it's like $600 with that, no. These speakers are outputting way higher than they should be. Way higher. Like to the sub. Like they're feeding it like 100 hertz. I could tell in other songs where there's um, vocals. Well, that's not bad right there. But I can tell you from listening to the actual subwoofer. Iggy and the Stooges, give me danger. I could tell, because I've hooked up a many a subwoofer to many a thing. They're pushing way too many frequencies down to this to try to compensate for their lack. Or they just, and the thing is, nothing happens when you plug it in. It just, it just says, I'm gonna still be this speaker doing its thing and I'm gonna give those frequencies down too. So it's sort of like, it's a half ass. It, it, it should immediately cut off. If they're gonna try to give that 100 Hertz, this should stop doing 100 Hertz and it doesn't. This is still trying to do 70s, 80s, 60 maybe. It's doing it poorly, but it's trying. And then this is going up and it's doubling up frequencies. So it's just all, it's a fucking mess. These speakers are a mess and they should never have been put out. So I'm sorry, Florence, thank you. I hope you send me something else because you do have great things. I've, I've reviewed stuff. I don't think I've given a Florence product a bad review. Have I ever?
Have I ever given anything they've put out a bad review? I haven't touched their subwoofers yet. I know they made that weird Bluetooth thing that looks like it's trying to be B and O. I haven't listened to that. But these had potential. It's not hard. Rockville proved it. It's not hard to make a quality six and a half. It's got full on, you know, four way amplification for both speakers, custom wire, the DAC in that. It's got a DAC in that Rockville. It's decent. It's not terrible. This is literally a terrible DAC. There's no subwoofer in, but that thing has XLR ins, and there, there could be so much more going on with this. And I don't recommend it. At least though, it does have this. I will say, like the Edifier, the $800 Edifier S3000 Pros, you can control next track, last track, play, pause on your blue, on your Bluetooth. Blue Bluetooth, blue Bluetooth. So that's got a thing. Oh, you could also um, take that bright LED and you can dim it or shut it off. That's the best part about these speakers so far. It's just, you could turn that on or dim it or turn it off with the button, great. Mute, power, input select, it's just... I didn't expect to get a set of Fluon speakers, self-powered six and a halves and actually come here and give it like a, eh, shit, review. So, but I did. So we're gonna move on. Uh, I will remind you that the sound demo all right, that's that's just I'm sorry, that's just too much sub right now. It brought it would be much much better if this was a normal sub with an actual knob and I could adjust the gain and then turn the crossover all the way down. But that's still half-assing it because he's don't put out enough flow in to begin with. They don't they just don't do it. They move the driver, but nothing comes out. It's like when Mike Chewbacca screams and she goes and like her mouth moves, but nothing comes out. That's what these do at low end. So, they're just hollow, weird, cheap. They should be cheap. They should be $150. These should cost what the Rockvilles cost, and the Rockvilles should cost what these cost. I'll link the Rockvilles. I'll link the RB42s, which I mentioned. I'll link a couple other speaker alternatives. Hell, I'll, you know what? I'll be nice to Fluence. The very first link in this video will be to the AI40s, because I like those. Those did their job. They did exactly what I expected, maybe better, and they looked good. And then below that will be the AI60s, which you guys can choose to not buy because, and then a couple other speakers below that because you just need, I hate bringing you here and not telling you to buy something that's the least decent. I mean, I'm not gonna rec, I'm gonna recommend this Genlac sub, but not for this particular purpose. And I'll link the Micah cable and what the hell the JDS Labs EL DAC, cause that thing's amazing. And the wallpaper, which I specifically chose for this review because haha, <laughs> you gotta be held on and told what's wrong. Um, you'll see this video first if you're on Patreon. I believe Fluence has given me this set. Fluence doesn't usually ask for things back because they're really cheap to manufacture. And like, oh, promotional, yay. So these will end up in a yard sale and you can all bid probably the exact same it's going to amount to the shipping cost of them. Who knows, maybe you have a specific thing. Maybe you want to start a project. Maybe you want to try to port them. Maybe you want to try to rip them apart and see what makes them tick. I don't know, they'll be in a yard sale. For any patron over $5, you get into, the, get into the yard sales every month from the 1st to the 10th. You also get to ask me questions, you get to see these reviews about a week or more early. And uh, if you wanna to talk to me directly in like a private Telegram chat, or well, it's a private group chat of like 174 people, which is great, that's $10 or more. And I really, that's, that's the place to be. If you think you're cool, you're not, unless you're in that chat, then you're cool. In which case, holla. So yeah, the links and that wallpaper and I'm sound demo. If you want to hear what the, what the you can legitimately hear with, I don't remember which speakers I did it against the sound demo. It might have been the Rockfills, and then one other set. Not sure. It's been weeks, but uh, enjoy that, and I hope you enjoyed this. And tomorrow will be the sound demo in public, and then the day after that will be a full release. And uh, ha <sighs> ha. Sorry, baby. Oh, Canada. <laughs>